Welcome to another Cloud of Things tutorial. So far, you have successfully logged into the portal and attached some devices. So now the question is, where's the data? Today we're going to look at the functionality in our cockpit. Hi, I'm Jennifer Bruninghaus and I work for the Internet of Things unit of the Deutsche Telekom. So let's get started. The cockpit has been developed so that you can easily see the data from your devices and build reports for analysis of the data. The cockpit interface is to be used by colleagues that are concerned about monitoring and less so about the technical setup of the cloud of things. Let's take a look at the main functionality that the cockpit has to offer. Please log into the portal and you'll find yourself on the welcome page. Here you will find quick link tiles that will simplify your navigation in the cloud of things. Their function should be self-explanatory for both administrative workers and IT specialists. Under the colored quick link tiles, you will see standard applications, normally administration and device management. All customized applications will be found here also. For quick changes between applications, the app switcher can be found at the upper right hand corner of your screen. Now we will be taking a look at all the functions to be found in the navigation bar at the top of your screen. To start a search, click on the magnifying scope. Beside this, you will find a plus symbol. Here, you can create a new report or establish a new group. Continuing to our right, you will see your user settings. The enable support button is an important functionality if you encounter a problem or need help. This button allows our service team to log on to your tenant and therefore see exactly what you as the user sees. This enables you to find a quick solution with experts. Finally, from here, you can log out of the portal. Now let's take a look at the navigational points in our left-hand menu. In the top left-hand corner, you will always find the application that is currently visible on your screen. Here, we are in the cockpit application. Moving down, you will see an entire menu of actions that are available to you within this application. Click on a specific menu point for the respective page to open. For a concise view, submenu points can be expanded or hidden by clicking on the arrow to your left. You can even expand or contract the entire navigational list by clicking on the black arrow next to the application name. Now, let's look into the different menu points. When you were on the home page, you might have seen some widgets. These widgets provide a graphical depiction of your measurement data and are found on your dashboard. Some of the widgets are pre-configured. However, the cloud of things allows you to adapt them or to build them on your own. Let's start by creating a dashboard. Dashboards can be placed in different areas of the cockpit and can display different information. The functionality and the way of which the dashboard is created is the same. I will take you through these steps right now. Let's start with the building blocks to the dashboard, the widgets. Existing widgets can be modified or deleted by clicking on the cogwheel. This is found in the upper right hand corner of the widget frame. To create a new widget, click on the cogwheel in the upper right navigation bar and choose Add Widget to Dashboard. Choose which type of widget that will best fit your information and configure it. With these steps, build your dashboard. Once the widgets have been created, you are able to drag and drop them into any position on the dashboard. They can also be resized by pulling on the lower right hand corner of the widget frame. Further dashboards with their widgets can be built to serve groups or certain devices. Now we will do this for the group north. In the Navigations menu to the left, click on the respective group. Here you will also find a cogwheel in the right corner. Click on this wheel and further on Add Dashboard. Here you should give the dashboard a name. Position the tab to give it a location and assign it an icon. Next you will need to designate which users are able to see the dashboard. The design of the dashboard and its respective widgets can also be defined using layouts. Click on Save. The dashboard will appear as a new tab. 
Click on the tab and insert the wanted widgets. Use the same steps to make dashboards for certain devices. Instead of starting with the choice of a group, choose Device instead. Dashboards can be modified with time. Do this by clicking on the cogwheel in the upper right hand corner. In order to avoid unwanted changes by other users, you may also choose to lock the dashboard. This can be done in the menu behind the cogwheel. The placement of your dashboard is important. A dashboard that is placed at the home screen can show data from all devices within your tenant and be visible to all. If a dashboard is made on a group level, it will only show the data from the defined group and devices can belong to multiple groups. Set a dashboard for a given device when you only want to monitor the data from this specific device. The grouping of the devices is particularly effective when you have large numbers of devices. It makes the navigation and maintenance easier. Groups can be given a hierarchical structure. But how do you establish a group? To do this, you can start with either the device management app or the cockpit. It does not matter where they are created, groups are shown in both applications. Click on the left navigation menu on Group. To the right, click on Add Group. Give your group a unique name and click on Add Group. To edit your group, click on the Edit under the name of the group. Here, you can change the name and insert notes about this group. To make a subgroup, choose the group that will be superior. Choose the header, Sub Assets, and insert it into the mother group by clicking on Add Group in the upper navigation bar. To delete a group, click on the three black dots next to the group and choose Delete. To assign devices, go to the upper right hand corner and click on Assign Devices. To remove them, choose the respective device with a mouse over and click on the three points next to the device and choose Unassign. Now we will take a look at the next function in our navigation bar, Alarms. Here we can see a complete list of alarms that can be filtered by importance, critical, major, minor, and warning. Alarms are triggered through smart rules or device features and collectively shown on this page. The following point on the navigation menu is Data Explorer. Here, the visualization of data can later be used as a basis to define thresholds for the alarms. This data can be found in various points in the cockpit, as example. Here in the navigation bar, we can see the data points for all the devices. By clicking on Group, find the tab Data Explorer. Here, you can see the data points for the respective group. On device level, you find also a Data Explorer for the chosen device. The functionality is the same, however the settings are relevant for different levels of the information, for either the entire tenant, a group, or on the device level. When you click on the Data Explorer, the first five data points will be shown. The portrayal of the data point can be customized with specific values and color. This is done by clicking on the small gray arrow to the right. You can define a warning zone by using yellow to show when a threshold has been met and a warning should be triggered. A red zone can be defined for alarms of a more critical nature. By using the function Add Data Point, you can choose further points out of the list. In order to gain a better understanding of sensor data with respect to your devices and machines, you are able to see alarms and events on either a timeline or milestone diagram. What is the difference between an alarm and an event? An alarm is a signal that indicates that something is not okay or needs your attention, whereas an event is a device-initiated message that was relevant for a given application. Let's take a closer look at this. Click on Add Alarm and Event at the lower right hand corner of the Data Explorer. Find the device for which you would like to set the alarm. Choose the device with a click. Here you will see an overview of the alarms and events that are already defined for this device. Choose the element that you would like shown within the matrix and click on Add. The chosen element can now be seen below the menu point Alarms, Events. 
Additionally, the visualized form is shown directly under the graph. You can adapt this element, for example, by changing its name by clicking on the small arrow and making changes, or you can delete the element if necessary by clicking on the three points and choose Remove. Events are depicted with a diamond or a milestone, whereas alarms are shown with a bar. Now we are going to shift our attention to reports. Under the menu point Reports and Reporting, you can find all available reports to be either reloaded or newly created. Reports that are created here are available for export to a CSV file by which the data can be further compiled into needed information. To do this, simply click on the Report of Interest and click on Export. There are additional reporting functions. However, these reports cannot be exported and are similar to dashboards. The benefit of such reports allow you to compile a report using widgets from different groups. In order to create such a report, click on the plus symbol on the navigational bar at the top of your screen. Finally, the last point of our navigational menu is configuration. This concentrates on functionality involving the data point library. The data point library allows you to set default values for data point properties. In the library, you are able to define various format characteristics to be used in different devices. Data point properties can be compared to text formatting in word processing software. It is similar that you are able to choose a standard format that will be used for all data points. The characteristics found in the data point library are normally used for business rules around thresholds or the smart rules. These rules trigger alarms that are based on the data points found in the library, where red and yellow zones have been defined. You can also define these values in the Data Explorer and further save them to the library by using the cogwheel symbol. Let's take a look at this together. Choose the data point library. You will see a list of predefined data points and their characteristics. Choose one from the list by clicking. Here it is possible to modify the parameters behind the data point, such as the label, the color, or the yellow and red ranges. Modify the data point as wished. The characteristics that have been saved here in the library will be utilized by the smart rules, as well as the connected widgets, such as a gauge. This brings us to a good question. What are SMART rules? SMART rules uses a business logic that triggers actions based on defined data. The Cloud of Things dedicates an entire module to the management of SMART rules. SMART rules can exist on both the group or device levels and can be defined in the Data Explorer. In order to use a value defined in a data point template, which is found in the library, as a basis for a SMART rule, Go to the left navigation bar and choose Smart Rules. And then Add Smart Rule. If you would like to define a Smart Rule on a specific device, do this by using the Data Explorer. Choose the device, click on the Data Explorer tab, and choose the data point that will be relevant in your Smart Rule. Define your parameter and then click on the three points and choose Create Smart Rule. For every Smart Rule, you will see a control button that allows activation or deactivation of the rule. An interesting Smart Rule is On Alarm Escalated. When an alarm is active for too long and personnel does not react, a row of defined actions will be triggered in order to escalate the situation. There are other Smart Rules that may be interesting to you, such as the longer an alarm is active, the criticality is raised. Let's look at when a geofence is not held. For this, a region would need to be defined. If the device would leave this defined region, an alarm would be sent. This use case is effective against theft. If you should use a smart rule on alarm, send SMS, this will only be available if a mobile number is inserted into your user settings and the Open IT service has been booked. With this tutorial, we have taken you through the main functionality of the cockpit, building and editing dashboards, creating and exporting reports, understanding the difference between Data Explorer and the Data Point Library, establishing smart rules, 
as well as learning about the many navigational elements found in the Cloud of Things. We wish you a good start and suggest that you take a look at the further tutorials to help you explore the portal's functionality. When you found this tutorial helpful, please let us know by clicking on the like button or share this video with your colleagues. Thank you.